All right, hey traders, TG Watkins here. It is May 26th when I'm recording this, and I just finished a market update webinar that is going to be, well, if you go to profitpilot.com, we should have that up there pretty soon. And then also it should be on our Simpler Trading YouTube page. So just go there. It'll be one of the most recent ones from me. And uh, there are going to be lots of other ways. You can go to my Instagram or uh, you know Twitter or anything else like that uh, about me that you guys can find that. So do look for the bear market update webinar put out for free. A lot of good information in there. And I had a great time recording it. A lot of fun people in there. So yeah, go check it out. All right, then if we come over here and we take a look at the market, I've been talking about how you know, it looks like the market is trying to hammer out a bottom, uh, but it may or may not be the most exciting something. So remember, we are kind of in the middle of, well, it's the beginning of summer, and that <clears throat> there's been a lot of problems with the market. There have been a lot of things going wrong. A lot of companies, uh, hedge funds, firms have been getting damaged, and we just don't know how much uh, ammo is left and how willing people are to actually start putting money to work. I mean, this, this has really kind of gotten pretty bad, you know? So just do be careful about that. Realize what the market is, is like and uh, have reasonable expectations and then also probably expect chop. It's not going to be the smoothest thing in the world. So that being said, what we're seeing is we did have an undercut right there of price. Let me kind of change my color there. So if we look in through here on the hourly chart, some of the easier things to point out and show what has been happening for the market. You know, it looked like there was a double bottom. Well, there was an undercut, okay. Uh, also, maybe you could say inverted head and shoulders as far as that most recent one. But what I look for as far as the Moxie indicator goes is we have now gotten a Moxie price trigger, which tells me that the indicator has gone from negative to positive. And that's great. That tells us that uh, momentum is changing and shifting. We even had positive divergence, you know, price down, but the Moxie indicator up. Then we had a double bottom basically, and then the Moxie indicator up. So we started seeing that divergence. And that same divergence is what we could see on the 15 minute time frame as far as these near term trades. So what you can see here is price down, Moxie indicator up. All right. And then we had that big move on Monday. But I was looking at that and I thought, well, I know my rules and I would like to see what price is going to do with the 15 minute 50. So I didn't go in. We didn't do anything at that, that time. So and what I do came all the way back down here. So it's good that we didn't go in at that time. Then what we could see is uh, throughout that day, I think it was Tuesday, where price came down like this. What was that? That was a trampoline move on the 15 minute time frame. And remember, a trampoline move is when price is below the 50, but the moxie indicator is above zero. The whole purpose of what the moxie indicator is trying to do and communicate to you is that, hey, energy and momentum is positive despite whatever price is doing. So yes, price is down, but uh, it's like trying to push a beach ball underwater. It should actually be up. So uh, it's down there, but we're going to see this thing kind of shoot up at some point. And we did by the end of that day and then carried through to the next day, which was Wednesday, which was the FOMC minutes. And then what we could see was right here, we had price come back down and test the 15 minute 50 for support. Moxie indicator continued to look great. And then we uh, had a good move up that day. And then we continued with a good move uh, today, which is Thursday. And we got a nice shot up here. Now I decided to, we got in, we loaded up two positions here and I exited here. I think that, you know, again, this market is probably going to be choppy. So we're just going to kind of take it when we can. And my other thought was it's running right into this daily 21. It's also kind of running into the hourly third, third ATR. Now, of course, it could maybe gap up tomorrow, Friday, when you, you know, Friday when you guys are seeing this. So it could, it could gap up. But if it does, then I would expect it to pull back. Or it's just going to kind of come down here on Friday. Keep in mind that we have a three day weekend, uh, Memorial Day weekend. So we don't have uh, the market. The market is closed on Monday. So Friday could just be a very quiet day. That's a possibility, which means maybe it'll kind of fade, which means I'm kind of happy that we took the price off or took money off right there. So generally speaking, I see that at the 21 price should run into some resistance and pull back. Uh, another thing is that we have price up over the hourly 50. The next thing I'd like to see is actually price come back down to the 50 and kind of hold that for support, much in the same way that it did here for the 15 minute time frame. Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, but we don't know if price is going to hold the 50 or go just below it and then up, you know, like a trampoline move like that on the 15 minute time frame. 
So that's kind of where we're at. I think uh, I was talking about this in the webinar that I did today. I do think that the S&P price and the daily 50 will meet each other, but I think it's going to be a few weeks and it might be the moving average coming down to meet price instead of price coming up to meet the moving average. There could be a lot of sideways chop that the S&P could be doing. <clears throat> that being said, looking at the NASDAQ, more or less the same thing, but the NASDAQ is weaker, it is slower, and it uh, just does not have as much energy. What you can see is the uh, hourly 50 is still kind of a downtrend. It didn't even reach its daily 21, so there are some differences, and yes, the NASDAQ is the weaker one. And if we look at the IWM, uh, you know, it could actually be said it's the stronger one, funny enough. And maybe it's just because it's been beat up so much. But where the S&P made, uh, the S&P and the NASDAQ made lower lows, the IWM actually held up and made higher lows. So that's something to be uh, noteworthy. And then what you can see is there's the Moxie price trigger, which tells us now energy and momentum is positive. And you can see that here when the Moxie indicator crossed from below to above the zero. And then when we got price down here like this, that became a trampoline move. Remember, a trampoline move is when price is below the 50, but the Moxie indicator is above zero. So just like a trampoline, you come down here and shoot up like that. So we've got that going on. And um, you can see we are well past the daily 21 in this case. Now, we just don't know the path. The last time that the NASDAQ or sorry, the IWM tried going sideways, it was an absolute mess. <laughs> so yeah, it's hard to say where we're going to be at with that. It could, it could just continue to be a mess, but I do think at some point price and the daily 50 will meet. The problem is they may not meet, they, they may not meet up here. They might meet here as, you know, both of them converge on each other at the same amount of time. Price does not have to be very energetic. Now, seeing the, other than the trampoline move here, we could also see how the 15 minute time frame was responding. Here's price down. Here's the Moxie indicator up. So positive divergence. There's a double bottom. Moxie indicator continues to move up. And then you can see here price engaging with the 15 minute 50 and the Moxie indicator looking fantastic. So that was a pretty good walkthrough of the IWM and how that works. Uh, let me just show you also one other thing. If we look at the IWM, I wanted to show you on the bigger time frame. I've been seeing a lot of this and it's something I've been talking about. And in fact, in the presentation that I just gave today that you guys will see free on YouTube whenever we get it up, is I've been seeing a lot of stocks uh, head for their weekly 200s. Now, some of them go further, but we've at least seen price go to the weekly 200s. And lo and behold, there is price hitting the weekly 200. I was saying that all the way back down here when we first started to get these uh, bear markets and corrections and stuff. And I said, you know what? I would not be surprised to see the IWM hit the weekly 200. Now, of course, it was a messy, messy, ma uh, messy move until it finally reached there, but it did reach there. So pretty interesting to note that. All right, so we come back over here. And then if we look at the, the VIX, <clears throat> a lot of people have been asking me about this and what to do with it. Honestly, there's just not much to do with it. Uh, sometimes I like to fade or short the UVXY. And part of what I was able to see about the market hammering out a bottom, it, it was through the eyes of the VIX and through the UVXY. Because right here, you can see this was an inverse trampoline move. Price should not be over the 50 if the MOX indicator is below zero. And that has worked out well. So that told me that the VIX and volatility should not be going up and any kind of moves to the upside should be not appropriate or fake outs or something like that, and that they should eventually fade or fail and resolve lower, which meant that the market should continue up. And so far that has worked out beautifully. So that's that's what the kind of stuff we need to be watching out for and making sure that the VIX wants to continue to move down. Then let's kind of go over to USO because it is increasingly more and more difficult to find good uh, sectors, you know, areas that are actually doing pretty well. We've had our eye on USO for a while. Yes, it's been doing fine. Oil has been doing fine in general. Uh, oil producers, um, all the kind of oil names, they're, they're all looking pretty good. What we could generally see was it was in a pennant, but it was also starting to follow the daily 50. And then we saw this pullback, and that was yet again a trampoline move, price below the 50, but the Moxie indicator above zero. And then what we saw was here, price just sitting right there nicely on the hourly 50 with the Moxie indicator above zero. 
looking pretty good. So this was a pretty good sign that price was finding support and we should just um, you know, be long on this sector and long on names and whatever else you want to do with that. So as far as that's been going, you could trade UCO, which is the leverage ETF for this. And I think they just had a, a stock split, price split for it. It was $180, I think, and now it's 47 And you can see it's the leverage ETF. And of course, it looks exactly like USO, just leverage. So that's UCO. Uh, with that, XOP is one of the tickers that I liked to trade because it looked pretty good. And a couple things about this that I'll point out as far as Moxie goes. Here's price below the daily 50, but here's the Moxie indicator above zero. That's a trampoline move. Yay. And then what we can see here is here's price either bouncing off an uptrending hourly 50. You could look at it that way. Or if you wanted to say, hey, price dipped below the hourly 50, but look, the Moxie indicator was above zero. That's another trampoline move. And then on the 15 minute time frame, we can see there's a double bottom. There's your positive divergence. And then we can see here was price running right into the 15 minute 50 with the Moxie indicator above zero and boom, off to the races. So that is that is the setup that we saw and that's how we were able to take advantage of it and what to do with it. And so that has been working out well. Now, because I trade stock, I went with Gush. And of course, Gush looks exactly the same. And I think we're up I don't know, 15, 16, I don't know, 18% something to that extent. So that looks pretty nice. Um, again, I trade stock, so I like to find the leverage ETFs for whatever sector or thing I'm trading. All right, so then another one, UNG. Now, UNG, you know, last few days has had a move to the upside. I have not been trading it because at this point, it's kind of getting outside of the patterns and the, the feel and the look of what I like. It, it is looking pretty long in the tooth. It feels like it's getting a little... Um, carried away and too overbought. And so I have decided not to be trading it. Yes, there were a couple moves and yes, there were some moves up. I'll show you what they look like. But for my style of trading, they weren't really fulfilling what I needed to. The risk to reward ratio wasn't quite there. And I think today is kind of proving that. So what we could see is the last, I took the last piece of uh, Boyle, because again, I use the leverage ETF for UNG. I took the last piece off up there with 125% gain. Pretty nice. And I'm happy about that because there was then this giant pullback and, you know, who knows where it would have gone after that. Uh, as it turns out, it generally got held up by the daily 21. But the next area that I would have been willing to go in at was right here as price pulled back into the hourly 50 and held support and jumped up. So that's cool. But well, let me show you this that I'm kind of seeing as far as um, you can see that price keeps going higher and higher. But for every new high, the Moxie indicator keeps making newer lows or lower highs. And that's telling me that every time price goes up, it's going up on less and less gas, less and less gas in the tank, less and less energy. And so enough of those negative divergences and they start to stack up and then price just doesn't want to go up any further. We could also see that there was a bit of a gap here between price and the eight EMA. So overbought, you can see same here, same thing there. There's a gap and it was overbought. And then what you could also see is third ATR and third ATR. So overbought. And it kind of looks to me like there's a double top, a very near term double top as it also hit the third ATR. So I think also if I look here at the 15, yeah, if we look at the 15 minute, the other thing that was kind of calling my attention is that price kept going higher, but notice that the Moxie indicator went flat and then has actually started going negative like that, or at least trending down. So I've been hesitant with UNG. It seems to me like it's kind of coming to the end of this particular run and probably needs to consolidate uh, for some time. And I wouldn't be surprised if it kind of goes down. So it's going to get messy. That's kind of my point is I think it's just going to get messy and chop around and go sideways for a while. All right. Um, and then here's some real crazy stuff. <clears throat> Dollar Tree. All right. So Dollar Tree had earnings or maybe Dollar General had earnings. One of them had earnings. They both moved on in sympathy for them. They have been on a absolutely wild ride. And I feel sorry for anybody who has either been long or short on this because uh, both directions probably got run over. So I just kind of wanted to mention this because the short side totally made sense. Uh, go after Target and Walmart and uh, retail, all of that was just having a hard time. What you could see was there's the Moxie price trigger on the hourly chart, hourly chart telling us that, hey, energy and momentum is now negative. And then you can see here that price just kept following the hourly 50 lower while the Moxie indicator was below zero. 
everything was picture perfect for that as far as the downside. And you could see that then price was starting to fall below the daily 50 and then whoosh, you know, got the news and totally went down. Um, now, maybe the only argument is that it got oversold and it came into support of, say, the daily 200. Uh, but whatever earnings happened, well, for whatever reason, earnings goosed it. Maybe they had good numbers, don't know, but whatever it was, they just shot this thing right back up. I really, the only thing I could say is it was oversold. There was a big gap between price and the moving average. It was outside of 30 ATR. It was at that moving average. And uh, the only thing I could say is it was starting to get up over and follow the 15 minute 50 with the Moxie indicator looking pretty good. But that was the only thing that looked good. Other than being oversold, the 15 minute time frame was the only thing that looked good. Nothing else looked good. And somehow this thing is popping up right back to where it came from. So yeah, <laughs> good luck trying to trade anything like this and see where it's going to go. I'll show you DG. Uh, basically the same, same situation. Almost impossible to trade. So if you were able to catch any of that, good for you. If you weren't, I hope you didn't get too damaged on either direction. Well, that's some gnarly stuff out there. All right, then um, AEO. And let me kind of come over here. Let me do it on the larger time frames because what I want to show you is this is also indicative of what we've been seeing out there in the market about things just getting hit and moving on down. So AEO did a full round trip. It's American Eagle Outfitters. It's like Gap and Abercrombie Fitch, a clothing store, basically. But look, this was pretty much the beginning of the COVID thing. Up, back down. <laughs> it's just made a round trip. So think about all that, that federal money that had to go someplace. It went into names like this, and now the government money has to come out. One, the major thing I want you to see here, it all began, at least then the next major move down began with an inverse trampling move on the daily time frame. So price should not be over the 50 if the Moxie indicator is below zero. That started the downtrend. And then you can see it confirmed it here as price continued to follow the daily 50 to the downside. Another name like that is uh, ANF. So this one is Abercrombie and Fitch. A um, little bit different, but you can see it's been having a hard time. And this is just kind of what's going on with the market. So uh, right here, well, for almost for intense, all intents and purposes, this was an inverse trampoline move. Tri price triggered to get up over the weekly 50. The Moxie indicator was almost below zero. But if you didn't catch that one, you could have caught this one. This is where price came up and got rejected by the underside of the monthly 10 uh, or monthly weekly 50. And yes, the Moxie indicator was below zero at this time. So that was just a, an exact rejection. And then it careened on down and oh, look, it's right there at the weekly 200. And then in through here, there's the Moxie price trigger, there's the Moxie price trigger, and it just could not hold the daily 50 either time. And then I've got a couple other things I could say in through there, basically the 50, 250 maneuver and the 50, 250 maneuver. And then on the hourly chart, uh, here's your Moxie price trigger, and then price continued to follow the hourly 50 on down. Again, the Moxie indicator totally below zero, and that's what really rolled this thing over. So A and F, we're seeing that just get destroyed. And then uh, DKS is another thing. Now, there are other names out there. Go look around. There are names out there that still have a lot of meat on the bone to the downside. So if you want to take advantage of them, I, I think that there's plenty of opportunity out there for them. You could also see here with DKS, Dick Sporting Goods, uh, there is the Moxie price trigger. And you could see that was right as price was starting to cut through and then fall through the weekly 50 and then just careened on down. It had earnings. So it dropped on earnings and then spiked back up, probably because whoever was short was cashing in. So that was maybe a short squeeze. But basically, third ATR, weekly, 200. And then you can see, let me, let me get this situated. There you go. So here on the daily chart, you could see it all the whole time. Inverse trampoline move, inverse trampoline move, inverse trampoline move, because the Moxie indicator was below zero the entire time. You could even see... It basically did the same thing there. It ran right into the underside of a downtrending hourly 50. And same thing here, ran right into the underside of the hourly 50, the Moxie indicator below zero. So big moves, they've taken a long time. I think a lot, most of these trades took over, over 100 days. And so, yeah, kind of gnarly things out there. Now, if we kind of step back and we go to the bigger, let's go to Apple. You know, I'm looking at this and saying, you know, just like the market and just like the NASDAQ themselves, uh, since Apple is the market, 
we should be seeing these things start to trend back up again. They may not be the smoothest, they may not be the easiest, but I think if you say, well, it got from here and it went to here, then that's something that could totally be said. What kind of path? I have no idea. But it does look oversold because price is off of the 8 EMA, a uh, very far gap between price and the daily 50, hasn't even touched the daily 21. So, you know, these are still very, very heavy names. The S&P le at least has already hit the 21. The IWM has already passed it. These are laggards. They are not happy. <laughs> they're not happy and they're not strong. So pay attention to that. It is just now starting to put in a head and shoulders or yeah, head and shoulders, something like that. And it is only just starting to get past the hourly 50, whereas other names and other indexes um, are well above a, a flat to uptrending hourly 50. This still has a lot of work. So Apple is now a laggard, not a leader. And then Tesla, same thing. Yeah, look at that. Same thing. Looks very, very similar. They're laggards, not leaders. Uh, yes, they will probably continue to move up to the upside, but they're, they've got a lot of they've got a lot of overhead baggage, and they don't seem to have a lot of zest. So of course they're tradable. Just got to find the right picks and what you want to do about it. And again, be reasonable about your targets and your expectations, and be prepared for them to be messy and choppy as they go along. So remember one more time, if you guys are interested, uh, come over here to profitpilot.com. We've got uh, I just put a hour long, little over an hour webinar. It's free about what to do with this bear market. I had a great time with it. And I think that you guys will really enjoy the things that I put out there and show you and um, enlighten you about. So thanks again, everyone. Take care. And I will talk to you soon. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.